Namaste. Well, I've been working pretty hard on the Mandukya Upanishad series, and before that, the Kato Upanishad series. And uh, due to some health concerns, I'm going to have to take a break now. So uh, I do want to get back as soon as possible, but here's what's going on that you need to know about. There are going to be like six retrograde planets in the next month. And so this is a time when you cannot expect to make steady progress in anything. I mean, it may happen, but you can't count on it. The best thing you can do at a time like this is to retreat and meditate. We've been talking about all this spiritual knowledge. Well, this would be a good opportunity to put it to use and do the practices. Because without the practices, just the theory isn't going to get you any place. But I want to leave you with one thought, which is the connection between identity and consciousness. You know, we've been teaching these four states of consciousness. Here's the good old chart for a long time. And finally, we got to the Mandukya Upanishad, which is the source of all that teaching. So this is a good time to look at where you place your concept of I am. In what state of consciousness, in what part of the body, at what energy level, and so on and so forth, do you place your concept of I am? So most people, I would guess 99% of people, place their idea of I am in the body. That means Jagrat consciousness. And of course, the problem with Jagrat and the body is that it's always changing. And it's all temporary. It's not only temporary, it's not fully satisfactory. It's never fully satisfactory. And of course, because it's an object, it's not self. So to try to place your concept of I am in something that's not self is contradictory. And so we have a problem in modern life for many generations now of trying to understand who I am in the context of the body and it can never resolve. Then some people, maybe some very intellectual people, I used to be this way, uh, place the concept of I am in the mind. And of course, that is svapna consciousness, dream consciousness. Thinking is also dreaming. It's a formation of a mental image. And using language is also dreaming which is why so many of our abstractions created with language, like corporations, countries, religions, philosophies, science, and so on, is so weird, you know? <laughs> it's so much against our actual nature because it's a fabrication. It's an abstraction. It's not a reality. It's a dream. So just like the phenomena in Jagrat consciousness in the material world, the world of the mind is also temporary. It's also unsatisfactory, and it's also not self. Because if you can perceive it, it's not you. <laughs> 
I mean, that goes all the way back to Drig Drishy Vivekaha. Remember that? The seer and the seen. Whatever is seen is by definition not the seer. So anyway, some people, very few rare special people, place their concept of I am in Sushupti consciousness. This is the void, emptiness, shunyata, nibbana. And any authentic meditators, anyone practicing real samadhi, not the fake trick samadhi where you close your eyes and pretend to meditate, but the real samadhi where you withdraw pratyahara, withdraw the senses from their objects, withdraw the mind from the senses, withdraw the sense of I am from the mind and the body, and concentrate it in the self, the unknown, the unknowable, the objectless consciousness of sushupti. But even this is still conditioned by ignorance. So there is only one more place where you can put your sense of I am, and that is in Turiya. And that's really where it belongs, because Turiya is Brahman. Turiya is described in the Mandukya Upanishad as being not having anything to do with consciousness, actually. Because consciousness always has an object. It's dual. It's dualist. Dualistic. But Brahman has no object because it's one. It's non-dual. Therefore, it cannot be conscious. It cannot be consciousness. What is it? Well, it's inexplicable. It's unknowable. But it is the real self. So, if you can place your sense of I am in this non-dual, non-doing, non-perceptive, I mean non-conscious, but perceptive of itself alone, this Brahma, this Turiya, but this is the actual identity. This is actually who we are. And the fact is, we are in Turiya all the time because the only thing that Turiya can see is other states of consciousness, like Sushupti and Svapna and Jagrat. So the fact that we are conscious of consciousness means that we are actually Turiya. And then when Turiya simply withdraws into itself, it's identical with Brahman. And this is the full self-realization, Turiya Tita. So if you want to really establish your identity on the spiritual platform, take this as a topic for meditation, especially over the next few weeks, because the world is going to be engulfed in all kinds of, you know, unexpected, sudden, a very strange, a black swan type activities, uh, because so many retrograde planets. A lot of people are going to be overwhelmed with confusion and uncertainty. They're going to freak out and they're going to do stupid things that cause a lot of problems. So the best thing to do is stay inside and meditate. You know, hang up the phone, <laughs> turn off the internet, and just go into yourself and find your center, find your Turiya, find your objectless, unconditioned, pure consciousness, and establish that as the center of I am the center of your identity. And that, of course, is just causeless bliss. So, until I can be with you next time, Aum Tatsat, Aum Shakti Aum, 
Om Namah Shivaya.